All right. Oh, you're doing what I should do. Weaving it in. Yeah, but I didn't bring my project with me today that I need to do that on. I so. have a lot of ends. Yeah. Ta-da! Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The Dear Becky and Lizzie edition. Had to think what day. Which day it? of the week is it? Ah. I'm Rebecca. I guess for today, Becky. Uh, I'm like, wait, what am I supposed to say next? It's <laughs> been a week. I am the owner and operator of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I think it's because I threw the word Becky in there, which I've done again. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in hazy, overcast, rained last night. Who knows what it's going to do today, Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. Now that we've established that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was just saying, so I looked over while, while the little sign was up and Liz was weaving in ends. We were having, I was telling her, I was telling her she should just leave the fringe on one side of her shawl and, and start a trend, but she wasn't having it. It's not on the bottom edge. It's on the, the it, fringe Your should not be. point there. being? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I didn't really think she should do it, leave it either, but you know, I was trying to be helpful. Then she wouldn't have to weave in her ends, right? No, that and, and weaving in that I was talking about is my crochet piece. I've gotten far enough. I really, I was weaving in ends when it started and, I, and then I stopped. And now I have a lot of danglies and, but I left that at home. I'm trying to be good and not carry all of my projects back and forth. Of course, when I do that, nine times out of 10, I don't understand what this is. I know, right? You're talking well, about. I left, I left my stone catcher here yesterday. That was, you know, I went through withdrawal. It's all good. Cause I knew I wasn't going to work on it. And then, um, I left my Charlotte's universe crochet at home today because I'm not going to work on it at the shop. I'm kind of ahead, not ahead, but I'm, I've made enough progress on it that I can, and it's getting big. <laughs> it's getting hard to move back and forth. I had to take pictures of it on the floor today. Oh, it's, it's bigger. I mean, I didn't even try to put it on my filming station because last time it was just big enough for my filming station with one corner, you yeah. know, with two corners that makes it too wide. So, um, <clears throat> So I left that at home today, which means I can't weave in ends. But people were saying last week when I did the Nostapin thing, again, since I didn't have my hands free, I would, or I was focused or I was, you know, I was a little more subdued. I think I put someone to sleep. Yes. She went back and rewatched the episode once she got a nap. But <laughs> so that's what happens when I try to work on a project while we're filming. So, Okay. Um, although, you know, if you're having trouble getting to sleep and I can assist with that, that's actually a good thing. What are you looking at me like that for? Um, I'm trying to see the bright side of things, you know, mm -hmm. there's too much to be down about. I'm trying to see the bright side. Um, I feel like there was something else I was going to say and it's, it's gone. Oh no, no. It was that nine times out of 10, when I leave a project at home, Someone comes in who wants to see like a, a yarn knit up and that was the project I left at home, which either means I need to shuttle everything back and forth or I need to finish some stuff. Yeah. Both of those are hard things right now. So <laughs> hard. I have the same problem. Um, yeah. That's why we get along so well. <laughs> Inside up. Okay. This she is... ignores things she doesn't want to talk about. <laughs> We both have um, chasing butterflies, chasing projects issues. I had issues, but I have issues with that because I'm also trying, I'm like, ooh, someone might want to make this. So I should start making it. Like there's a, an Espastrico, uh little shawl that you just need like, like leftovers to edge. So we couldn't even make kits for it because, or unless we use yeah. leftovers that I have here for some reason. Um, and I really want to make it because it would be a wonderful one skein project, but we, we have difficulty making kits for it and stuff. You know, it's like, uh, so I haven't started it yet. Anyway. Anyway. If I finally get around to doing an Espace Trico um, profile on the newsletter, I haven't done one of those in a while, but I've just been tired. I guess that's normal for me though. 
-hmm. those of you who binge watch these shows might just be like does she ever sleep and I do it just isn't enough to make up for what I do during the day apparently (laughs) so um and my ace anyone who's following my saga my ac is not fixed they're they're going to work on installing just a whole new system which means i have to survive until they can install the new system so she will oh i know i i have full faith in in my landlords and friends to do this it's it's a matter of equipment coming in and figuring out a way to get by until that happens um it, you can't just like our just like our website and other things that we do online you can't just go and it's done Ta-da! so i have patience i don't understand that either. i have patience i'm just not used to not having air conditioning liz i came in this morning to the shop and and liz i said it's cold in here and liz said now you know how i feel because she doesn't have ac at home but she has a whole system rigged up to work with that and I have to rig up my own system and that's going to take like another week. So it, it, you have to know how to live within the bounds of not having air conditioning and it requires a lot of fans. Yes. And I only have my ceiling fans right now. I'm, I'm working on this. I'm getting some window fans delivered. Um, but no, I was telling Liz the story of my, my cat wigs out when his um, routine is disrupted and he used to be terrified of ceiling fans. So I thought the past few nights when he's been jumping on and off the bed and doing crazy stuff that maybe he's terrified of ceiling fans. And it could be because he was complaining when I left today because I left the ceiling fans running last yesterday and I left them running today as I left the house. And he's looking at me as I'm leaving like, don't leave me. Ah, the ceiling fans are going to eat. Me. Yeah, well, but by the same token, it would be so much hotter if I didn't leave those running. Yeah, you know, so. Because if I leave the air running right now, it just pulls in hot air from outside. Like the system's functional. It's just not communicating about conditioning the air. So last night I discovered in, um, in his jumping on and off the bed and his body language, I can tell when he's tense and when he's not, that it wasn't the ceiling fan that was wigging him out. It was that my comforter wasn't over me it was piled at the end of the bed he was just like what is this craziness ah and when he gets too wigged out that's when he bites me so for him to settle down I had to pull my comforter my down comforter over me (laughs) while I'm trying to not overheat and the second I pull my down comforter up to here he went oh that's better right on my chest and I went, okay, now I have two layers of heat on top of me, <laughs> but he's calm. I might sleep. So, so did you, I did Sweet. apparently my watch, my watch, my phone. I put my phone on the corner of the bed face down with this app. that's supposed to track your sleep. I'm wondering if it's either the, I've got a foam mattress topper that might muffle movement. And sometimes when that cat jumps on the bed, he plops on top of that, which does makes it not move. Um, I don't think he did that last night though, but it thinks I got really good sleep last night. I don't know if I agree. Hey, I just got a text saying our power is off at the house. <gasps> oh no. Yeah. That's no good. Then your fan system doesn't work to keep you cool. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know. Fortunately today it's going to be a little cooler and yeah. Bernie will be outside, but. Um, I've left some windows cracked. So hopefully the cat won't I, bust through. He does stick his head. Uh, he goes, he tests it with his head. <laughs> But, uh oh, yeah, it was like we've detected a power outage in your neighborhood. And oh, you got a, a text from like Duke. Yeah. Not from Bernie. That, no. Uh. Of course, if we have a power outage and depending on where he's standing in the house, we only have like that teeniest, tiniest bar of cell service. And so, so he can't let you know. He probably can't. Yeah. Let there, know, there's so. a lot of welcome to life in the mountains. Like that would happen to me. I think there's a little bit better service where I am now, but that would happen to me over at the other, the old house, his house. Um, We had Wi-Fi calling, like it was such a dead zone. If the power goes out, we can't even report it to the power company because we don't have a landline. So, you know, the hazards of engaging with modern living and not keeping the old remnants. I'm at work and there's air conditioning here. So she didn't care. (laughs) I did bump the AC up a degree because I was like, it's too cold in here. Well, no, like- Then we're gonna gonna go home and and fry. The past couple of years before like the plague and everything, we would sit outside most of the day. So going home 
to air conditioning was actually colder. Mm -hmm. Well, and and now we're sitting, now now we're we're sitting sitting outside. outside. I was thinking that yesterday. I'm like, it's really hot outside, but it'll help me feel better when I go home. It, it, I won't it actually, feel as like you acclimatize to I'm, it a little bit. I am acclimatizing. I'm feeling it was it was 75 in my house and an unconditioned 75 in my wow, house this morning. Um, yeah, because I had all the windows open and all the ceiling fans on, but um, it, it it wasn't a miserable feeling because I think I'm getting used to it. Yeah, you know. Anyway. It was colder outside. It was in the low 60s outside. I freeze to death on the drive in because I won't turn the. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we should get to our questions. We should. This is lovely, but this is something I was like, we won't do that if we have a podcast. We won't talk about random crap. No. Ever. No. We will stay focused on yarn and knitting all the time. Sorry. Random crap. We, we have it. Like, it's almost like everybody does, <laughs> but we did start filming late. So, well, we have, um, we have three, um, some were directly sent as a dear Becky and Lizzie and, and some were sent as a general question that we decided to answer today. Yeah. And they're, they're fairly easy. And I don't think we need to focus a lot of time on them, which is why like, we just rambled. For it. Yeah. Like, I mean, if we, if we, if, if, if you disagree with us and we do not go into enough depth on these questions, give us a comment. A, a couple of them there. are like, we can have a discussion, but not like a super in-depth. We'll just keep an eye on yeah. time and stuff. Oh, and by the way, in case you only want to watch a little bit and you've already, you already like, you already wasted 10 minutes of my life. Um, we have a sale announcement at the end of this video that will apply to this weekend. So. Yes. Cliffhanger. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of two-parter SG1 things lately. Uh-huh. And I'm like, really? But I'm binge watching. So you 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 haven't you don't have to wait until yeah, the next it's like, year. It doesn't or, work. Or yeah. next week at least. Yeah. Or you know, it's like so much for a cliffhanger. Next episode, it does mean I stay up later. But I've already yeah. scrolled too much on non-knitting stuff. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Dear Becky and Lizzie. Yes. If you were stranded on a deserted island, you I always read that as a desert island. There's an ED on the end of it. Or uh, no, not desert, because a desert island is still a. I know a deserted island, uh, which could be a desert. Could be a desert. on the island. I was gonna. I messed up my own joke. I was gonna say uh, like instead of deserted, like a, a dessert island. Never yeah. mind. And you you had all the <laughs> chocolate you need. <laughs> But see, you, it's a dessert island. It's a dessert island. Okay. You had all the chocolate you need, but you could only take yarn, knitting needles, and one additional tool. What would that tool be? Not stranded. This is a whole lead up to like all this. It's like what what yarn? No, we're not asking what yarn you want to be no. deserted with. Just um, what you can take yarn, knitting needles, and one additional tool. Mm. I already know what mine would be. Go ahead then. I'm thinking a crochet hook. Because <laughs> You can fix stitches, and if you get tired of knitting, you, you can, can crochet. crochet. <laughs> and with a, if it's a big enough crochet hook, you could make like hammock type. Yes, you but could, if it's a big enough crochet hook, then you, you can't fix, fix your mistakes. That's true. But you need you know. a crochet hook set. Yes. <laughs> Outsmart the system. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, no, I think, I think this is a pointed question because we have so many notions here that we love. I mean, I, I think I can get by without like basics, like a sewing needle and stuff, because, um, I might be cares about, yeah, except for like creating a functional thing to live with, who cares about sewing stuff together? Sewing ends in like, yeah, you, I think with, I think I could use the knitting needles to pull yarn through. Like I wouldn't have to sacrifice my one notion to be a a sewing needle because I could make one or I could use my needles in a way that could like pick and pull and do the same thing. It wouldn't look as nice, but that's okay. Um, I'm trying to think of all the fun notions we have and what I would like. Or a, a big sully. Yeah, I mean, keeping my yarn clean would be nice, but I don't know. I don't know if I'd. It's funny because a lot of these things that the tools that would be like, ooh, ooh, you can engineer it out of other stuff. So, like stitch markers, you I love yarn. stitch markers, but we could make our own. Yeah. Um, what's something we couldn't do without maybe? I mean, I might be sad if I didn't have a cable needle, but 
you could always like, I'm, I'm thinking too hard about this, I know. But you could use your knitting needles as a cable needle too. You, you could know. find a stick laying on the beach. You could find a stick, I know, I know. <laughs> um, what do we have that, I mean, that takes us back to like the yarn at something. I mean, you can fashion something like that, but nothing's as good as like hollow out a gadget a coconut gizmo. And stick your yarn in. Um, I don't know if I would be, if I was stranded, if I would worry that much about my needle size. So I don't know if I'd need a needle gauge, you know? Um, hmm. What extra fun thing would I like to have with me that would keep me entertained, you know? Um, I don't know, because even Euclid and stuff, I mean, who cares? I would wash, wash in the water at the, you know, it'd be seawater, it'd smell funky and that'd be life, right? I think your crochet hook one is a pretty good one. So I'm trying to think of our fun gadgets. Um, like a row counter might help. One of our fancy row counters. You, you row. could keep track of days. You <laughs> instead of going crazy and being like, "How long has it been?" But you know, if you forget yeah. to click it one day or if oh, it yeah, messes yeah. up, you know, because <laughs> um, counting is hard. You so know, hard. Um, you can always fashion stitch holders, but I like I like my stuff that I don't have to do the low tech hack on. You know, pattern keepers things like that. I'm trying to think of, um, if I had a way of blocking, I might want my blocking, my, my knit blockers, pins, something to like hold stuff down with maybe. I think a crochet hook is still a good thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, Cause I'm thinking of like how many of our gadgets and gizmos are things you can't fashion out of like something you find, like maybe a gleaner. A gleaner would be nice. A gleaner would be nice because it's got a lot of different things in it for like, I mean, if I don't know if you would care about lint on a deserted island, but um, lint we, we, and, and I, I know people who might care about lint on a deserted island. So, right. You know. Mm -hmm. So I would probably go with, um, I mean, something that's going to make me happy, like, like the stitch markers or stitch stoppers or the gleaner, you know, something that's going to, um, or even just the maker's keep because it's magnetic and I could find anything on the island that's magnet that's metal that could help me survive. You know, that's all I got. We put way more thought into this than- <laughs> Well, it's, I mean, it kind of shows, I mean, and I say that to people when come in the shop, we have all these cute gizmos and, and I don't want to upsell people because there's low tech hacks to like everything. These just make things more fun. And I like having things that are more fun, but if we're really going to push like this analogy or this scenario over the cliff, like if you're in survival mode, do you need the fun things or can you fashion them? Can you make them on by yourself? You know, if you're really stranded and don't have them you probably can fashion what you need, at but, least chocolate and yarn and needles are. Perfect. Well, and I mean, what, you know, that, that will get me through, but, um, but when you come to the shop, you don't, you're not in survival mode. You usually, yeah. and I want to have fun mode. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. We should move on. Okay. So the <laughs> next question was yes. a, um, just a form submission mm -hmm. to that you forwarded to me. So I'm just going to read the message and won't put any names or anything. Um, message. I found out people think because I can knit, I can repair knitting things for people. Have you ever had this happen? I mean, we can expand that. And the answer is yes. Um, I mean, I, as the owner of the shop, I kind of have to fix things for early. You know, people say, fix this for me. And I say, will you pay for it? You know, if, it, if it's more than really fast thing. But I think in general, knitters and crocheters, if people don't know what goes into knitting and crochet, especially, they will make lots of assumptions, right? They'll be like, oh, you knit, you can do this for me. You know, and, and yes, that question yeah. is specifically about knitted things or like if you knit, someone will say, well, I have this blanket that has a hole in it. Like I see that on knit and chat all the time. Like people are like, someone gave me this like keepsake memorabilia blanket and asked me to fix it. What do I do? You know, it, I think people do that all the time. They're like, well, I don't knit and you do. And I have this thing here. Or will you make something for me? When, or, when, you know. when I first started working here, so 
I started knitting in November. I started working, working in January. And Rebecca went on vacation in March. Yes. And I gave her time to get acclimatized. And Rebecca told me if people come in with a project that you can't fix or you don't, you don't have to be obligated to fix anything. Yeah. Well, because here's the thing above, a, and, I, and I know Liz must continue with her story, but just a caveat above and beyond just being a knitter and people assuming you can do things, people will assume that yarn stores exist solely to fix solely things. to help them fix things yeah. or to give them help on things or yeah. and it's a thing we like to do but continue. not everybody in a yarn store can so and there's nothing wrong with that. no so people would show up to the shop and some of the people would be like so is rebecca here nope she's on vacation okay can you help me with this nope like i just started knitting you're doing something way more complicated than I can do. So no. And even though in my head, I can do a lot more than, you know, or at that time I could do a lot more like cables and, you know, stuff. I couldn't fix that. I hadn't even taken Rebecca's fix your mistakes class yet. <laughs> and That's so really like, but you work here, but you know, you work here or you know how to knit. And I'm like, no. And so they'd be like, okay, well, you know, when Rebecca gets back, I'll come back in, you know, maybe I'll buy another project to take home in the meantime, whatever. And, but I'd have, a, I'd have a handful of people who would come in and go, no, no, you knit, here you go. And I'm like, it's like, and you should, next time you should be like, no, no, you knit. Here yeah, you go. <laughs> I, I look at it and I could find the mistake, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to fix it because it was inevitably in a lace pattern that I'm looking at going, Oh God, uh, lace! Yeah, unless you know I, the pattern, mm. I have no idea what you're doing here. Like, yeah, and they probably had no idea what they were doing. Yeah, yet. there was there was a period of time where I joked that you know they'd leave, I'd go outside and smoke a cigarette, and I'd go, "Ooh, I know how to do that now." <laughs> like it took a while to sink in, and uh -huh. you know, but it, it's it's been through trial and error and watching Rebecca fix a lot of mistakes. Like I learned by watching and asking questions. So watching Rebecca and just kind of being here, watching mm -hmm. her fix mistakes, I'm like, okay, I can do that now. And sometimes I need the cigarette and sometimes I don't, depending on the complication of the project, but hang out longer than five minutes after I tell you, this is how you do it. Just because out it there. could be. <laughs> It wasn't right. Ah, no. Yeah. And and when someone comes in and wants wants something fixed, um, I will often. It's harder now in COVID because we don't have that many people coming back multiple times. We do have some a lot of people doing that, but it'd be like okay, the first time I will fix it for you, but I will tell you everything I'm doing, so that if you're listening, you might pick up on what to do if it happens again. The second time you bring it to me with something that needs the same thing needs to be fixed, if we were paying attention. I will, you will hit, keep it in your hands and I will walk you through what to do so that you learn it so that the third time, maybe you can do it by yourself at home or, you know, come in for moral support. But um, it's kind of on that, you know, uh, give a man a fish, teach a man a fish type of thing. Yeah. And, and some people will say, give a man a fish and then teach him to fish, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like steps in the process. But um, yeah, I, I feel like people who, aren't engaged in the craft will make a lot of assumptions. I've, I've also, like when I was a crocheter, I'd have people before I worked at the yard, just, you know, started hanging out here, living here, whatever. I'd have people go, so I have a knit sweater. Can you fix it? And I'm like, I don't That's knit. Different. Like, I don't know the- It's not the same the skill. flow, like yeah. I can whip stitch that together, <laughs> but it's not gonna look like mm -hmm. the knitted piece and- People yeah. would just say, but it's yarn. And, and I, I, like, no. I have a feeling that knitters get the same thing with, you know, with, A, I have an heirloom crochet piece. Can you fix this? And if they don't crochet, they're kind of like, no, it doesn't work yeah. like that. And, um, or they'll be like, not the fixing things, but they'll be like, oh, you knit, you can make me a sweater. Yeah. Uh, that takes a, a lot of time and effort. And it's not just, hey, whip this up for me. I, so, I will say that knit worthy. 
yes. that in in fixing items mm-hmm. i somebody was like so my grandma knit me you know this blanket and it's got a little hole in it whatever there are like 150 billion ways to patch things and some of them look cool and some of them don't but I, some I, of them are matchy matchy and some of them yeah, yeah i told her i was like in my i don't know it just like popped in my head in japan they repair like antique sets like tea sets and stuff with gold to where you want it, to see the mistake you or the crack or mm-hmm. whatever like yeah the fix. you know the fix make it yours <laughs> and make it you know like mm-hmm. take some silk thread and you know like make it stand out that hey this was a mistake and i patched it so it can live for you know mm-hmm. live with the patch and it doesn't matter if it matches or not but you know and for someone who it matters if they match find someone who can do that type of yeah. work or you know accept that it's it sometimes it some, work. some some of the work isn't going to be i well you know, i used to have on the piece. like brian's customers used to um give him cashmere sweaters with holes in them to and say hey can rebecca fix this and first of all it's machine knit very finely knit and the cashmere it's made there's we don't have anything remotely like that in the shop i would have to use like sewing thread yeah. and attempt to replicate the stitches and there's almost no way it's not going to be seen Same. and and cashmere sweaters the fine cashmere sweaters people were talking about and giving me or giving we pass on to our um fixer and blocker here um they're they're more prone to moth damage to just getting snagged on something they're such fine quality well that and that, that's hard really the, hard to fix the yeah. cashmere in those or the for yarn people the weight of that is even thinner than the cobweb and, mohair that most yeah. people use in a yarn shop like it is so and so finding fine. finding even if the mohair would have worked finding the right color yeah. to match their super fine cashmere sweater. Yeah. Can't just do it. We had someone bring in um, a coat that looked like it had multiple layers of, of machine knitting in it that there was a hole in. And it's a wonderful, beautiful coat, but that's not necessarily something that someone in a yarn shop can fix or to the level that they may have wanted it fixed. So, um, and finding something that's the exactly the right color is like, yeah. yeah um so so long answer to the question yes we have <laughs> um it's it's always intriguing what people will go oh you you do this craft you can do this for me mm, might not be that easy all right what do we got last question this one's gonna take a little bit of time but we have 20 we minutes have time. so we're good um dear becky and lizzie how do you decide what yarns and colors to stock in the shop what is your best seller Best regards, never not knitting. What is our best seller? Oh, that's an interesting question. I, I'm going to start this one off with a story about how when in olden days we would get yarn for the shop. Okay. When they're I affectionately call them drug reps. They're yarn reps <laughs> that would come in with great big suitcases full of suitcases. Like the big ones that you pay extra Broly. for with the airlines. Yeah. Um they they come in they with come in with more yarn than their physical bodies binders and yarn samples and generally it's this is everything that we represent and these are the new yarns or these are the old yarns and these are the new colors yeah and we would rebecca would go before they showed up hey tie me to the mast we're not getting anything or maybe like this much worth of yarn and we go through and we need to reorder this stuff or whatever. And then they would pull out Takes something hours. with unicorn souls in it and go, hey, how about this yarn? And Rebecca would go, they have red and black. And, and I'd go, just cut, cut the loose. ropes. <laughs> and we, it got back. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Some of it was a gam- like for new yarns it's a, it's always a I mean, gamble let, let me yes new yarns um new fun things things that the yarn reps are like this is gonna be cool that's a gamble um overall here is my philosophy on what we have at the shop overall there are exceptions but in general 
uh, when I started the shop, I was pulling from my knowledge of working at a yarn shop and things I liked and things I didn't, but also wanting to have a range of um, fibers and prices and within different weights. So like, you know, thinking about, okay, we need, we need fingering weight yarn, we need sport weight, we need DK, we need, you know, worsted, bulky, super bulky, if there's room, a little jumbo, let's hit those. And then we need some basics in all of those weights. And we need at least one basic, maybe at least one that's not so expensive. Um, and then we need something maybe that's Merino because that's very popular. We need something that um, is a cotton or cotton blend. And we, we haven't, it's like cottons we might not have in every single weight, but um, we need something that's fun. It's like, what, what, you know, we need some baby yarns and that's usually DK. There's a lot of thinking through what goes in there. And then when we select some of the yarns and we have different companies, we're pulling different things from, and it's trying to cover all the bases as much as possible. And then there's, okay, this yarn has 45 colors. I'm going to get 12 and I want to make sure there's a range or that they go with each other or that we've got like a lot of times when we're looking at the um when the reps would come in I'd use post-it notes or pennies or something and I'd be like okay we're gonna we're either going to put down and try to pick out maybe like a rainbow and some neutrals or there's 19 colors and I only want to bring in 10 so which nine are we not getting you know there's a lot of different ways to approach it yeah and, um, and sometimes it's just, this is gorgeous. I want all of it, but <laughs> um, then it's, where are we going to put, then there's, where are we going to put it? So, okay. What do we have space for? What is, um, what is a hole in that range we're trying to create? Um, it gets a little complicated. And, and then there's someone who comes in and says, but I wanted worsted weight Merino in light blue and you don't have it. Or, or you carry Plymouth, so you must have this yarn. I'm like, I don't carry everything that Plymouth has. I wish I could, there's not enough space. And if I only carried everything that one or two yarn companies had, in theory, that's good, but not every yarn company has all the fun things people are looking for. So it's trying to pick and choose. And sometimes you take a gamble and you hope that you have enough for what people are looking for. And then someone comes in and wants only Malabrigo and we don't carry that. It is a good staple yarn um, on the, the, the cost effective side of nice yarn. But we have things that are similar to it, or we just, I ran out of space and didn't want to start up um, a relationship with a whole new yarn company. I don't know if that's really the case with Malabrigo. I would be happy well, to bring some are... of that in. But again, there's so much Malabrigo. And people, when they say, do you have Malabrigo? They might be asking about one of five or six different varieties of Malabrigo, but they haven't gotten that far yet and we don't have space. So. The, the, the other thing is, is there are what, 10 other yarn stores in Western North Carolina? At least. Mm -hmm. And there was a good dozen before the pandemic and I, a couple have moved away or closed. Yeah. Yes. And probably ha over half of them carry Malabrigo. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of over like you, it's oversaturated but but you know we have everywhere is at least an hour away yeah so for us it's oversaturated for someone who's looking for convenience it's what do you mean you don't have malabrigo yeah <laughs> so and ah. some some reps or some yarn companies won't if you're within a certain mile radius doesn't matter how long it takes to get to the yeah. other shop if you're within sell it to you. And some, some, we're, we're not even care. talking about yarn companies, some products will only do sell to one zip code, you know, or yeah. one, however many zip codes. And we don't run into that issue quite as much, but, um, so it, it, it's, it's a challenge, I will say. And then when I have to reorder, it's like, which one should I prioritize reordering from when we need more of everything? Because people have been supporting us, which is wonderful. That's like one of the issues we're having right now. I just ordered from a bunch of companies because we're low and I ran out of cash flow before we got to some of the ones that we usually order from. <laughs> so, um, but the question of, so, so again, to boil it down, you know, too long didn't read, although you've been listening this far, is we are really, 
I strive in here, I'll tell people when they come in to have a range of weights and fibers and prices. And not all yarn stores will do that. Some will focus on, okay, have um, mostly the same fiber, but in all different weights. Or they will say, we want all expensive yarns or we want all inexpensive yarns. So you kind of have to figure out what's your demographic, who's buying from you. And how many people are you trying to cater to? Are you trying to cater to a wide range or a really focused range? Who's going to spend big bucks? That kind of thing. If you have X, Y, or Z yarn. I think, I think that flows into our, what is our best seller? Because it depends on what season it is. Mm -hmm. Because if it's in the, like last year when the shop was uh, more restricted traffic, we were still open, but when we had more restricted, we were still traffic, doing business. We were, yeah. Our best seller was fiber space. Well, and I would say that's still probably our best seller, but, or one of our, well, one hey, of our best sellers. people we order from a lot. Yeah. But we, we order from fiber space on a regular basis and it picked up during the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. This summer mm -hmm. with the tourist season, our best, best seller has been daydream dye work because, because people want local when they come to the shop. People want a memento to take home yeah. and fiber space comes from the UK. Yeah. So, so unless they're pairing it with something from Daydream Dye Works, they're like, eh. Yeah. We'll even say, isn't this lovely? And they'll say, yes. And we'll say it's, it's not local. And they'll go, mm. So, yeah. So it, it depends on, on the season because we're a tourist town. And, you know, in the winter, we have a lot of people making super bulky hats and, you know. And, and it's a tough question to answer because we can say, yeah, yeah. We want the encore for the blankets. Like, and we might be selling more cotton in the summer, yeah. but we also might have people who are getting ready for Christmas presents. Yeah. So I remember going down to Florida and thinking I was going to find only cotton in all the shops. And there was actually a lot of wool in those shops because people in Florida were buying things to make for their grandkids up north. So um and yarns come and go, and sometimes the yarns we, that are just starting to be popular when we can't reorder them, and it's just like, you know. But I would say, over the past couple of years, like during the pandemic, like we were ordering, we've been ordering from fiber spates on a regular basis because it's just a, it's a good staple, nicer yarn. If you're gonna make something in DK or fingering weight, it's and it knits up lovely. And so we order from them on a regular basis. Um, Feederbrook Farm, which is our sheep to shop yarn, our spin cycle adjacent yarn. We have been ordering from her a lot lately because uh, people are getting into the color changing yarns. The night shifts are like Andrea Mowry. There are a lot of designers who write for spin cycle and this works for the, a lot of those patterns in some way and, and um, Things that were popular are coming, are, are getting their second or third resurgence. So the um, the feeder book has been really popular. The local dyed, like we are, we are just saying to Emerald every time she drives, drops off yarn, okay, dye us a new batch because we're gonna run out, or we're gonna run low on something, or we just want to keep your stuff because, like Liz is saying, it's absolutely true. As as more tourists, we never lost any. We never had an off season. We always had people drifting in and out of town wanting because it was somewhere kind of safe to vacation. I don't actually think it's safe anywhere, but um, people were like, ooh, let's go to the mountains because it's fresh air and we can socially distance and there's no people there. So we won't catch anything when we're actually in very high transmission rate right now in the county. But you know, there's fewer of us here. So I guess they think they'll be safe. That's why we do a lot of shopping outside. But anyway, um, but yeah, people want local. And then we'll tell them about Just Bite Me being the Transylvania County colorway and ooh, you know. Yeah. And um, after that, I think in terms of the basics, like I've been ordering from Cascade on a fairly regular basis mm -hmm. and a little less Plymouth, not maybe not as much as pre-pandemic times, but people are still looking for basics but not as much we, as the people wanting mementos. We have, we so. have um, a lot of people making baby blankets because whether they're younger and they're getting a niece or a nephew or a friend's having a baby or they're or older and it's grandkids, grand grandkids mm -hmm. we go through a lot of and, baby blanket yarn. And people want um, cost effective for that. Mm -hmm. They're not looking to make it out of, even though fiber space is machine washable, that's an expensive blanket. 
So we're trying to give them options. And then of course it's like, but do you have it in this color? And no, we don't, sorry. Or, and do you have the cream? We're out of it because everybody wants that right now. And, so. and on the same thing, we have looked to keep our palette expanded. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the yarn companies are like, brown's no longer popular. So we're getting rid of every color of it's brown. It's like, no, neutrals. You always need neutrals. <laughs> what are you doing? It's, ah! So we yeah. might have had the perfect color last year, but this year it doesn't exist anymore because and, and because I'm not quit. Let, because I'm not letting reps in, I'm not aware until I go to reorder that they don't exist anymore. Yeah. So um, because reps take hours and we don't have hours um, to spend enjoying our reps company, we're trying to focus on our customers. But reps are what help us with it's it's pre, just a ugh, pre yeah. pre pandemic in the before time when the reps like Rebecca would have a rep scheduled to come in at nine, which now we're filming mm -hmm. at nine. But on we, most and days, ho hopefully that would give us an hour before the shop opened. But yeah. they'd usually be here till twelve. Yeah, it would never be an hour, and um, maybe only one or two customers would come in, and we could kind of let them do their own thing. And that's not really how we function right now. So and and sometimes come in, but mm. sometimes having customers come in at the same time that you have a rep can be really dangerous because they get to see all of the goodies and then they're like, "Ooh, you should get that." But we they own like they want it, but we don't know what the rest of the market would be for that. And we don't so know if they're actually going to come back and buy it yeah. if we bring it in. But yeah. sometimes they do, but you know, I'm conscious of time. Yes. So oh, yeah. um, we could keep going on this, but did we want to show off the fun thing that you did or do we want to wait till Tuesday? We can show off the fun thing I did. And then quick. I got to talk about sale and then we got to um, wrap up. So yesterday I was like, Ooh, I'm going I'm to gonna get a similar, you got ply two balls of Noro Ito together. I applied the same balls, different spots to where it came out. And out of the two balls I got, I filled my bobbin four times. So um, some of them I filled up. This one was the last and I filled it, overfilled it, but it turned out so cool. It's plied Ito. It's plied. So it looks almost like hand spun, which, yeah. which you know, she did, she did spin in the plying. Um, but like this, we were going to be like, look, this became that. And she I bought, the last, bought the last two skeins of that pretty yarn. <laughs> so this is another colorway of Ito. She took two of these big guys and she made that. And I just think that's, that's really, that's such a cool idea. If you have like a spinning wheel or you did that on your Nano. No, I did that on the Nano's big brother. That's what I mean. The, she has an electric spinner. Um, that's just a cool option for, this is worsted weight. Now you've got like what? Super, bulky, super bulky. Which is really cool looking. Um, and, and I have to order more Ito, but do I have, do I have, I appropriated money for that? No. So um, it's just really cool. The other thing, I don't know if we ever mentioned on camera that the new pom-poms came in. We have some pom-poms available if you'd like it. Roots and branches. It is full of uh, things inspired by trees. The last Nora was inspired by birds. Nora, pom-pom. Pom-pom. This is what happens when Morning. I stop thinking and just start talking. Um, there's there's lots of really pretty cable-y stuff in here. Oh, lovely. It's on our website. Um, so the sale, we're nearing the end of our anniversary month and we have to have one more sale. So, um, our sale will be this weekend. And for us, the weekend, we're going with kind of our old notion of weekends when we weren't working, but we're still working one of these days, Saturday through Monday, because we're not open. We're going to prolong the sale through the days we're not open. So you can still save online. Um, Saturday, you can come into the shop and get this discount. Sunday and Monday, you can save on like Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, you can save all three days online. We're taking it to the full 25% off again. Um, and the code that I have put in the system is four years because we have been in business for four years, no spaces spelled out. Um, if you put the number four in years, it should still work. But if that doesn't work, spell out F O U R. Y-E-A-R-S should get you 25% off in the online shop. And um, if you're going to come in Saturday and use this discount and say, hey, you've been in business for four years, nudge, nudge, nudge wink, wink, 
be explicit you're trying to use the code. Because if you're like, it's been four years, we're gonna say, yes, it has and walk away. And you know, we don't need to be coy about this. Say, I wanna use the four year discount today. Boom. We, with the, with the, the sleep deprivation ish and the working nonstop to get everybody happy yummies and put away happy yummies so people can come in to get more happy yummies we're tired and our brains don't think four years ha 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 no don't be don't be coy you don't want to be coy with this Uh -uh. it used to be fun like we would (laughs) we would we would do that you know if you mentioned it in passing or whatever but we have a hard time if you're sly about this where you you'll walk out and go wait where's my discount be like yes we used to be like the password is four years and you can do that but you gotta be like my password for my discount is four years. Please give me the discount and say it while we're ringing you up. <laughs> um, and the caveat to that too, is if you decide to use it on Sunday or Monday online and there are any issues, please contact, please send us an email. Please don't finish your purchase saying, oh my gosh, I need to use it today. Contact us and say, you've had, there's been an issue. The code hasn't worked or something like that, but we need to get that communication from you during the sale time. And then we might be able to retroactively work out during the week, something having to do with that sale. But if you contact us afterwards and say, hey, by the way, I tried it and it didn't work. We're gonna say, I'm sorry, it's over. But if we get an email from you on on Saturday, on Sunday or Monday, especially, Saturday, you can call the shop, that's great. If we get an an email from you on Sunday or Monday saying, I'm trying, it's not working, or I want to do this, that, or the other thing, um, or I'm trying to use my gift card and, and, um, gift cards can't be used online. So contact us when we're here on Saturday to do that. Um, but don't complete the sale and then say, but this didn't work because we may be out of options once the sale is complete. Uh, rewards points do not you can't rewards use. points don't work with the sale sorry yeah. we got to yeah. save those for another time and they don't work online anyway so um just for saturday just for saturday if you're coming into the shop and say i want to use my credit and i want to use 25 percent off we'll, we'll say well, okay which one's going to save you more money yeah. we'll work with you on that because we want it we do want to save you money but we're not going to combine them yeah. so because you know you if you use 25 percent off then you can save money another time with your credit yeah you know so um four years that's the code it's 10 saturday i'm finishing (laughs) saturday sunday and monday are the three days what's the what's the on the calendar days for that oh she's just ready to go open the shop Um, so we should go the the calendar days um because someone could be watching this next month and go it's saturday uh we're talking about the 28th the 29th and the 30th yes almost the end of august all right and um, we have knit night tomorrow night. So please join us. And the shop is 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time shop phone number. 828-877-3550. To enter. It's in the description below if we're talking too fast right now. Um, like, subscribe, we're comment. At, we're that. at like 576. Yeah. We're inching closer to 600, which would be another sale just for YouTubers. Woo! So do that. Patreon, if you, if you're like, I have all the yarn I need, or even if you're buying yarn from us and you'd like to support the work we do, you can sign up for a monthly subscription on Patreon. So patreon.com slash sundragon. We have to go open the shop. We love y'all. We miss you. Come visit us. Write us a comment. Reach out. Bye. See you next week.